morning everybody and fantastic to see you all again. So I'm really excited about today's episode. It's something that I've been working on for literally months to be honest and that is talking about style and particularly style in Lightroom and how you can create your own style in Lightroom. If you're anything like me you probably go on Instagram or Flickr and look at other people's photographs and think whoa they're amazing I wish I could do shots like that. I see um, different people's styles all the time and really don't want my photos to be like them but hope that I can develop my style that's you know as strong as some of the styles that I see on Instagram and it's it's really interesting really to see that and to tr try and dissect it a little bit and try and understand how we as photographers can get something from that and try and define something that that really creates some originality to our work but also as much as anything else when you post something somebody can go I know who that's from so what I wanted to do is share with you four photographers work to begin with and then go into Lightroom and show you how you can probably go about developing your own style. So first of all I'm going to look at a set of images on Instagram and this is Ranva Jönsson. I've been practicing that for ages and I've still got it wrong, sorry about that Ranva. And she is a Faroese photographer who's an amazing, I, I um, did some guiding with her when I was last in the Faroe Islands. But her style is really really strong. Now obviously the majority of her photos are from the Faroe Islands which, which helps. Um, but if you look at her photos, the way she's edited them, then there's a lot of similarity am amongst them. And I think that comes from the blue and the sort of browny tones that she puts into the images. And I guarantee you that not all those images look like that straight out of camera. And she you know, goes about editing them in whatever editing software she uses to create this style. You know, the blacks aren't deep black and they've got sort of a softness to them but it's really the oranges and the blues that sort of stand out to me and create a really nice set of images that look fantastic on Instagram. So yeah I strongly recommend you to go and have a look at Ranva's work. I've linked uh, all the four photographers that I'm talking about today I've linked in the description below um, but yeah she, she's amazing and also if you're looking for somebody to take you around the Faroes when you go there then you know, then she'd be a fantastic person to contact. Okay, on to um, Dan Tucker's work. So Dan's is very, very different um, to the last person that we looked at, Ranva. His is real bold colours. Um, it's interesting, I was, I was speaking to him when, I, when, when he sent me these photos today and he said that uh, he's guided a little bit by Velvia. So Fuji Velvia, which was a real uh, you know, saturated film and it looked really strong and bold, the colours. And so he edits his image, images just like that. And one interesting thing that Dan said is that he adds about plus five saturation boosts, but most of the colour and the saturation comes from the contrast work that he does. So um, I think that's interesting and something we'll look at when we go into Lightroom because actually increasing contrast can also significantly increase saturation. And what I never do, and I, I, and, and I don't think it's a good idea is just increasing saturation across the board and, and doing it there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, he also says he doesn't like the colour green so he, he gets away from that and pushes it more to yellow and orange and, and he also <laughs> interestingly said that he does a lot of his stuff now in Lightroom rather than Photoshop and you can see by his images that they are so strong, that they're, they're so bold and wow that, that shot of Sky, which my similar shot to Sky was very subtle, you know, much more subtle colours. His is much bolder. I actually, when I look at it, think, oh, I wish I'd have done mine like that. But that's that's not the point, really. I, I don't want to change how I develop mine. I, I have got a style, and, and it tends to be quite a natural, subtle colour style. I try to go for a painterly type effect, and we will talk a, a little bit more about that later. But yeah, I wanted to show you Dan's work. I think he's an amazing photographer and a very unique style. So the next photographer I want to speak about is Neil Burnell. And I don't know if anybody knows Neil, but if you don't, definitely go and have a look at his work. He's got such an amazing set of images. He's also a graphic designer and that comes across, I think, in some of his images. He has very simplistic images and he creates what is often very difficult scenes to photograph, like woodland photos, and creates something really, really spectacular. So again, I've linked his details below, go and take a look. But this is a set um, of images that he's got. 
which is actually called mute, <laughs> which is interesting. And you can see that the images, if I just scroll through them, are almost black and white, but they've got a hint of color to them. And they are so, so beautiful, as well as a, an amazing compositions. I think that the, what the work that he's done in Lightroom to these images has made a significant difference to the style that he's now created. Now he's reduced the saturation almost to zero. I think he's got 5% saturation in there and he's moved the greens to a more bluey hue. And, and, and I think that's created something that's, you know, got a, a, a quite a sort of um, mysterious look to it. And, and again, it gives him a very unique style. Now he doesn't apply that style to all his photos. You know, this is a set of photos that he's done, but if you look at photos that he tends to upload onto Instagram and Twitter, then there tends to be a style to his work that immediately when I see a photo, I can say, yeah, that's, that's Neil's. Okay, going on to the final person I wanted to show you before I get into going into Lightroom and showing how you can do some of this, and that's Daryl Walker. And da Daryl um, is somebody that I follow for about a year now, and he goes to a lot of the places that I go to, so it's, I, I quite like following his work because he produces some amazing images. But I think he's got a style, probably quite closer to my style, I think. You know, he's, he's, he's quite muted in the way that he, he shows off his work. And um, yeah, you can see here from, from these images that there's a definite, you know, style to them. You know, they all look the same. And if, even if we go into the animal shot here, then, you know, the tones in that shot are very similar to the tones in the landscape work as well. And, and, and going on to portraits that he's done, again, you know, the, those tones have been passed through to that portrait work as well, which I think really creates a strong set of images and, you know, creates something that's really fantastic to look at. So one of the things that Daryl was saying to me is that, you know, to, to get this style, it's, it's about the shooting as well, which obviously it is, and he tries to go out in um, less than great uh, conditions, so where it's windy and stormy to try and get that sort of stormy, muted color look to begin with in the image. But then he crushes the blacks a little bit, so he doesn't have any real black blacks in his images. And he, he also reduces the clarity and the, and the contrast within his images as well. Um, and I think that shirt comes through a lot. You know, it's, it's very different if you, if you compare Daryl's work to Dan's work, a completely different style, but e they're both equally great to look at. You know, they both look fantastic as landscape photographers. So yeah, it was interesting to, to look at those. I think it's a good idea to look at other photographers and look at how they style their images. And if you can develop that style, then it can make a really big difference to your own photography as well. Because I think when you go out shooting and you're, you've got a style in mind, then that starts to improve how you start to see the environment and start to pick out compositions and think about what sort of light you're, you're interested in to get that style as well. Okay, let's go and jump into Lightroom then, and we can have a look at how you might create a style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this image here, which is the amazing pebbles. In what was a misty day when I was walking pebbles through the woodland here, which is where I usually walk her. Now, I think there's two different ways that you can edit this. Well, there's probably about 50 different ways that you can edit it, but there's two fairly different ways that you can edit it. So you could edit it, um, a sort of more traditional way, I suppose, and, and we could probably warm it up a little bit. Um, maybe increase the exposure, just pull the highlights back to retain some detail here. We added a bit of clarity, um, pull out some of the shadows, probably crop it a little bit, maybe pull it in there, and then maybe just do a, a bit of a S curve. And I'll add some more contrast that way. So, so the, the S curve adds contrast and I, I'm also adding an additional contrast here. So that's one way of doing it. And I think that looks good. I think that's a, a, a nice image of pebbles. But there's another way of doing it. And this other way is a good way of me showing you and introducing some of the more, um, not complicated, but more advanced techniques, I suppose. Things that you might not have used before. So the first thing that I might do is just reduce the highlights maybe reduce the contrast a little bit, uh, maybe just boost the shadows, the clarity, the whites. Then I'm just gonna change some of the colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I don't want any greens in here, so I'm just gonna make it brown. Cause I want to just have the strong contrast between Pebbles' fur and the browns in, in here. 
I'm going to crop it because I want to be able to and just slightly different crop. I want to be able to edit to the crop. Um, and then I'm going to just reduce the saturation of that as well to make it a little bit softer. I'm going to just bring up the black. So the black, by doing this, by moving the curve up here, what I'm doing is I am basically saying that there's going to be no real black in it. If I carried on moving it up, it would be white. That would be pure white. And then what I'm saying is that if I did it there, then black would be grey. And that would be black would be black. I'm going to say there's no real black in it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of contrast in it there. And I'm also going to say there's no real white in it. So the whites are just off-white, basically. And... I'm just going to slightly reduce the exposure. So you can see now on the histogram I've no blacks and I've no whites and that's because on that tone curve there I've lifted it off the bottom for blacks and dropped it a little bit for whites. So what I'm doing here is that I'm, I'm creating a, a slightly different style. Now I'm going to go back to split toning. I'm going to go to split toning now and I'm probably just going to just add a little bit of brown to the highlights and probably do that with the shadows as well. The next thing, the sort of final thing I'm going to do is I am going to add a fairly strong vignette on it. There we go. So I think I think that's a that's how I'd probably edit that. Um, and, I, and I don't think the first edit I did, which was this one, is is wrong. But I think there's a big difference between the two. Um, I tried to get my edits to look very sort of painterly. I, I want the, the colours to be fewer. So I, I, I sort of merge colours together a little bit. So you can see I've got rid of the greens and just had browns. It's my style. It's what I do. Um, and, I, and I like it. I, think it. I think it looks good. I think it makes Pebble stand out on this. However, somebody else would come and edit this and do it a completely different way. There is no right way to edit an image. But what I would say is that when you're creating your style, you probably should do something that you can continue through a lot of your images and try and continue that style because it will definitely help you to get better at photography by just thinking about it. Um, you know, and I know when I'm out that I'm looking at those colours now. So, you know, I like browns in my image. And, and so I, I knew when I took this that there was a lot of brown on the ground. I could get rid of the greens by moving the greens over to brown with the HSL slider. And that would make a big difference. So what, what I've done is um, I've put together, finally put together my presets. Now these are presets that I work on and use all the time as sort of basic presets. And there are 12 of them and I've, I've, I've finally finished them. So I thought this would be a good episode to release them. But what I would say is you shouldn't really buy them <laughs> because actually what you should be doing is developing your own presets. You should actually be, you know, spending the time and coming up with your own presets. But if you haven't got that time, if you do want to just start with something and start with the, 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 the sort of style that I use, then there's 12 presets that will allow you to do that. And the description of, of how to use them is in the presets. And then within that preset as well, there's also a very short video that I produced that shows you how to use them. Now they're available um, through the link probably here, and the link on my um, description below. I just want to show you, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but I just want to show you a couple. So for instance, on this image here, so this one here is Pharaoh's Summer, and it's pretty good. You can see as I apply it and take it off there. It's pretty good at working well for sort of summery days where you've got green grass. It brings out a little bit of the contrast within the grass and then changes the tones in the sky just to match that really well. So I, I, that, that's good. So the next one I'll show you just before I finish is one that I've called Helm Crag. And, and I've tried to name over, over where I actually came up with these presets. So where I went out and then developed a preset and then I thought, well, that preset's been really useful. Some I develop aren't that useful, but this was been really useful and I've used it for lots of different um, situations. So this one's called um, Helm, Helm Crag. And you can see this is, it works really well where you've got stones that are brightly lit by, by light. So this is a good example here. And I can apply Helm Crag to it. And it, and it doesn't do a huge amount, but, but what it does do, um, if I just reset that, um, if you look at the sky, you know, it takes out the blues in the sky. Um, and it just makes the rock just a look a little bit better. So those 12 presets are available now in the link below. 
If you do get them, that massively helps my channel as well, so thanks ever so much. Okay, I next week will probably be a video from the Pharaohs. If I manage to do one, I'm actually running a workshop for a week. I'm hoping to get a video out. Um, if not, it'll be something completely different. I hope you've ha found this useful and, and it's been um, fairly helpful. I, I do think that creating your style in Lightroom is important. So think about contrast, think about color and how color uh, works within your your image and um, also th think about saturations of those colors as well so do you want really saturated colors or really muted colors and they can help to create a really strong style okay thanks ever so much for watching until next sunday bye mm -hmm.